सो हेलो एवरी वन वेलकम टू वन ऑफ द मोस्ट एंटरटेनिंग एंड इन्फॉर्मेटिव वीडियो ऑफ दिस ईयर टिल डेट सो इफ यूर अ क्लिनिकल रिसर्च प्रोफेशनल एंड इफ यू यर अबाउट अ सी आर ए रोल द थिंग्स दैट इमिडिएटली कम टू योर माइंड इज रेगुलर एयर ट्रेवल ट्रेवलिंग टू मल्टीपल सिटीज स्टेइंग इन फाइव स्टार लग्जरी होटल्स प्राइवेट कैब्स एट द डिस्पोजल एंड फैंसी फूड एंड दिस पर्टिकुलर थिंग डज लुक लाइक एन एस्पिरेशनल जॉब टू बी इन But do you really know what a day in the life of a CRA exactly looks like? Let's find out. So this particular topic would be divided into part one and part two because a day in the life of a CRA has multiple roles and activity which cannot be covered in one particular session. So in the first part which this is we are going to cover section 1 2 and 3 where we are going to look at the pre visit preparation the cra travel and what on site activity does the cra do in the next session we will look at post visit activity the monitoring report the cra challenges and how to go about the cra career so let's start first and foremost we must understand before going to site what exactly a pre study preparation is and how does the cra prepare for a monitoring visit the pre visit preparation by a cra starts from seeking the dates from the site so whenever a cra has to plan a particular visit he has to look at the monitoring plan and what is the frequency so that he doesn't deviate the monitoring plan and whenever cra ask for a site date the site usually has multiple clinical trial running at the same time and they also have other cras or monitors coming to the site so convincing them of a particular date so that it is available with the site and it does not deviate your monitoring plan is one of the bigger challenges so a cra discusses with the site and plans a particular date where the site and the cra is available the next preparation is reading the previous visit report and creating a agenda so whatever the activities were pending from the last visit whatever the new challenges has occurred from the last visit to the future uh, visit that the cra would conduct so that agenda the cra has to prepare and in that particular agenda he has to clearly mention that what consent he will review what eligibility will he review he has to also focus on the pending source data verification and source data review so pending sdv sdr status the cra also looks at what is the ip accountability status does he need any reconciliation to be done and he also has to return the used ip and review the iwrs report for ip dispensation next he also focuses on the open action items the query status the non compliance and the protocol deviation that has occurred since his last visit and this is how he creates an agenda for the visit once the agenda is prepared he shares that agenda with the site and formulates a strategy to meet the study requirement because as you know that uh, whenever an upcoming data cleaning milestone is there or any data based logs or any upcoming audit cra has to focus his strategy according to it so when it comes to cra role you directly do not go to the monitoring you create a strategy you create an agenda and then you approach a monitoring visit so this is the pre visit preparation by a cra the most important preparation again for a cra career is having your advanced certification in clinical research so our friends at clinical aim research institute provide an amazing certification in clinical research where they also teach you about clinical data management and pharmacovigilance so for a cra career it is very important to have such kind of certification which gives you enough knowledge so that you can become a competent cra so do give them a call and they will help you with this amazing certification so now once the cra has prepared a strategy he moves on to monitoring visit and the most critical part is cra travel so let's see how does the cra manage his travel so when it comes to cra travel the cras are required to travel minimum 10 and maximum 15 days on an average in a 20 day working month which essentially accounts to 75% every month so cras travel around 75% every month and they are on the road 
and the CRA travel preparation usually starts from flight booking, cab booking and hotel booking. So given the dates which have finalized from the site, the CRA has to book the flight which is again from a certain budget. CRA has to do a cab booking because for the remote side you again require transportation and also whenever it is a two day visit or more than that he also has to look at hotel booking and this particular activity requires a lot of time and thinking on the budget as there are constraints that has to be taken into consideration so it is not only about going to the visit it is about planning from the flight to the cab to the hotel and again managing all that activities so we will take an example that what happens when you travel as a CRA to the site. For example, a CRA has a flight at 7 a.m. and he has to go to, for example, Delhi from Pune to Delhi. Let's assume that. So the flight is at 7 a.m., which means that the CRA has to wake up at 3 a.m. and he has to get ready and book a cab at 4 a.m., where he will again take an hour to reach to the airport at 5 a.m. and again you have to travel two hours prior uh, to the flight as per the uh, airline requirements and in that you have to manage the traffic you have to manage the check-in you have to manage the security and again if you are at the delay airport you have to manage the terminals also so CRA has to consider consider all these activities and manage to reach to the flight at 7 a.m. so now CRA has woken at 3 a.m. and he has reached uh, at the airport at 5 a.m. to catch a flight at 7 a.m. So once he reaches to the particular city, in this case Delhi, he will reach at 9 a.m. Again, he will rush to the cab and uh, reach to the site by 10 a.m. And hopefully there are no traffic jam. Now you can imagine this particular CRA has woken at 3 a.m. and he has reached the site at 10 a.m. Imagine the kind of mental state he is in to perform this activity. But when you are at the site, you have to be professional and you cannot be grumpy or you cannot complain that I've woken so early and I'm conducting this visit because this is a job of a CRA. Again, this CRA starts working at 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. Okay, he finishes all his monitoring activity as per the agenda and again gets to a cab and reaches the airport by 7.30 p.m. Okay, again, whenever it is an evening time, it is high peak time at any city in the world, the traffic to the airport is massive. And if you have to reach your flight by time, you have to finish your work in time and get into that cab so that you can reach the airport. Again, when he reaches to the airport, the activity starts all over again. You have to manage the check-in, the security, the terminals and go to the right security gate where you can board your flight. And imagine this particular CRA and I know a lot of CRAs who skip lunch because even I when working as a CRA do not get that particular time to manage all the activities and have lunch at the same time. So either they will have a table lunch and 99% they won't have the lunch they will have dinner. So if he gets to the airport at 7.38 again he has some dinner over there and gets to his flight which is at usually after 9 p.m. So he'll get at flight at 10 p.m. Again, that flight will take two hours to reach. Again, by 12 p.m., he will reach at the airport. And again, he'll take one to one and a half hours to get to his home. So again, he'll get to his home by 1 to 1.30 a.m. So here I want to point out that this particular person has woken at 3 a.m. And again, in the next day, 1.30 a.m., he has reached his home. So imagine the kind of mental workload, the kind of physical workload that this particular person is facing and the activity that he carries out. So this is the typical CRA travel. If it is a multi-day travel, then again you sleep at 10 p.m. Again in the hotels also you can go and you have to pre uh, prepare reports, uh, note down everything, the activities. Again you are up till 12 o'clock doing some kind of work, closing some kind of query. Again you wake up at 7 in the morning you reach the site by 8, 8.30 and again the activity starts. So traveling is one of the most critical part and managing it while maintaining your physical and mental health is one of the critical part of a CRA job. So now we have had a look at how the traveling is done. Now see what exactly happens when a CRA reaches at site and starts his monitoring activity. 
So imagine CRA is at the site and this is the beginning of the monitoring activity. Now if you are a CRA, let's see how the activity should be done. So when the CRA reaches the site, the monitoring starts with a brief meeting. So you take a short meeting with the site where you discuss the agenda and the scope of the visit with the study team and the site manager and if the principal investigator is available, you again discuss with them. You explain them why have you come to the site, what is your agenda, which particular subjects are you going to focus on and what activities will you do so that the site is clear of the scope and they prepare the documentation and provide you everything so that there is no wastage of time also the site's time as well as your time. The next activity is the CRA will request the source file uh, for the subjects which he has focused in his, in his agenda and he'll review them carefully. Now the CRA will focus on the eligibility of the subject, the compliance of the subject, what is the level of GCP, what is the level of documentation in GDP. He will again verify them through SDR, SDV by EDC data entry. He will again look at the process flow. Have they followed a proper process according to the protocol? He will look at the data and time so that there is no uh, sample collection uh, which is inadvertent or the activities have been carried out as they are defined in the protocol. He will look at the source data and he will prepare notes and observation from that review. So once he reviews all the files, he collects all the notes. He will note all the non-compliance all the uh, deviations, all the unresolved queries, the errors, the deviations, he will note all it down. Again, the CRA has to uh, review the IP status at the site. So he will review all the IWRS report for compliance in IP dispensation, subject allotment, blinding, etc. etc. So that he knows what is the status of the IP at site also. Once he gets the all the used and unused IP, he will look at the temperature log. He will look if there is any temperature deviation or excursion. Again, at every visit, CRA has to look at IP and dosing. He has to perform IP accountability. He has to see the storage logs, the inventory. And again, after that, he has to plan for IP return and uh, the supplies which are required by the site. Finally, he will discuss everything with the CRC and request for a clarification. He will ask the CRC for, CRC for query, uh, query resolution. He has to file protocol deviation also, which he has noted during the visit. He has to seek uh, the approval letters from the EC and any uh, safety mailings that are pending. So he, CRA will also focus on those activity also. And finally, the CRA will conduct the exit meeting. Now during this exit meeting, the PI and the study team are present and the CRA will clearly explain what the observations and the findings are of this particular visit. CRA will request clarification and if there are any scope for improvement and he will discuss how the visit went, what are the activity that was expected and how the trial should be conducted moving ahead. He will clearly explain what are the observation, what are the pending action items and what is his expectation from the site and how should they function. Then there's discussion uh, from the PI also, from the site team also that what do they require, what are the hurdles faced by them. The CRA again explains them each and every query and solution and he notes the concern of the sites also. So now the CRA has completed the visit. Now just take a moment, pause this video and see all the activities that the CRA has completed within a single day or even in two days. So these are diverse activities and require a lot of focus when you are at a site. He has to look at all the aspects of the site right from the subject source file, the EDC, the IP, the accountability, the requirements of the site, the concern of the site, if there are any protocol deviation, what is the issues with the site. So these are all round activity that the CRA has to conduct within a brief amount of time within a single day. And this is how he has to balance everything during the on-site monitoring visit. So now the job of a CRA is not done. So again, CRA has post-visit activity, which is includes the very important part that is monitoring report and follow-up letters that we will look at the next part. So I hope you have uh, learned a lot uh, with CRA. How does a CRA work? And this is just the half job. 
so stay tuned please subscribe to the channel so that you can know in the next video what exactly happens even after the visit so thank you for watching this video and i hope you like this video so please make sure that you subscribe to this channel and share it with your friends and family so that you can clearly understand how exactly clinical research works and thank you for watching this video stay tuned for the next one